Hello, it's Phil here at the NAM 2015 show, and the first thing we've run to, and literally we've run, is the new Pioneer DJ XDJ RX. And Lars is here with me. Hello, Lars. How are you, Phil? Are you ready to go? I am indeed. And what a big thing to start on. It, it has to be one of the biggest pieces of news in, in, in Pioneer and indeed in DJing for quite a while, which is the record box enabled XDJ RX. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, we, uh, we first introduced uh, similar products like that with the uh, XDJ Aero and XDJ R1. This is uh, a significant step up. You have uh, a full color, color screen right here. And it looks, it looks good and it looks like a decent resolution. That's the first thing that's hit me about it. The screen feels large and it does look like not an added extra. It looks like something that's been thought about. Yes. So I want to make that point, having seen it in person for the first time. The screen looks like all you'd really need to DJ with. And that's the first thing I thought, hey, you don't need more than that. It's big enough. Presumably the library shows you a lot of information, which you're going to show us in a minute. Um, so that's the first thing I want to get across. That screen looks awesome. The, yeah, this is this is a really nice quality screen. You see, uh, you have the waveforms of both the tracks here on the bottom, and then so these are the waveforms that give you a detail of the entire track. And then up here is a lot more detailed, so you can actually zoom in on that. You can see right here, just like on a CDJ 2000, you can zoom in and out on on your waveform right there. It also indicates where your cue points are. You see A, C, B right there. Those are your cue points that correspond to this. So it's four cues per channel on this unit, yeah. Exactly. Or per you track, know. per track, yeah. Yeah. So at the heart of it is a is a two channel mixer. Uh, you have color effects right here. You also have uh, a high pass, low pass filter. Um, you use this. Um, to select your track, you know, to browse through your library. If you want to load in, you press the arrow right here. Press so it play. feels it feels very much like controller DJing, like software DJing, as a lot of laptop DJs will recognise it. But, the, but again, the feeling I'm getting from this is it looks like a Pioneer mixer. You know, the controls are the same. So anyone who's used to using Pioneer mixers in clubs or whatever is going to feel instantly at home on this middle section of the unit. Yeah, absolutely. You have your color effects on the left. You have your beat effects on the right. You got, you know, your three band EQ, your trim pod. You got your filters right here. Um, so you're, you're right. You have crossfader curve adjust. Um, so this is layout wise. This is very, very similar to uh, to the DJM line. And then when you move over to the player, this is all also feels instantly familiar to anybody who's ever used used the CDJ. Uh, up here is your master section. So you have uh, an XLR master out in the back. You have a, a balanced quarter inch booth out in the back so you control that with these here um, and then you see you have two USB ports one here and one over here this one is to play only this one is to both play and record so so you, it's not like some of the older equipment where you needed to have a USB per deck in order for it to work you know you can quite happily turn up with all your music on one USB and DJ on this but you have a second one for the option of um, recording mainly exactly yeah that's right and you can in fact you can while you're recording you can even set track markers that's awesome so you can set track markers what for later on burning to CD or that kind of thing or yeah and if you want to if you want to review your set and you want to see you know where your transitions are so maybe you know, as soon as you finish your transition you hit track mark and then you'll you'll see that when you bring it up in your DAW or whatever so for DJs who are used to using laptops which is most of our most of our audience um, Let's talk a bit about the workflow here, because what we're looking at here looks like a laptop tucked behind a DJ controller, like, like our audience is used to. You've got the waveforms, you've got, can we see the library display? Is it possible to see what the library looks like on the screen here? So if you, if you press browse and you hit the back button, you can see right here I have access to, uh, to my playlists. Let me take one step back. So here you see, obviously in order for, for this to show up this way, you need to use Rekordbox. You know, Rekordbox so this is, is our... this is what we want to get on to talking about in a second. Rekordbox is our music management software. Uh, it's very easy to use. Think of it as like an iTunes for DJs. So it's not performance software, it's music management software, but it gives gives you a lot of features, a lot of bells and whistles, so you can analyze your tracks, you can create, it automatically creates waveforms, you can adjust your beat grids, you can set hot cues, uh, cue points, all that kind of so stuff. So again, this is, again, this isn't too unfamiliar to people who are used to using something like Serato in offline mode, where it, it's basically track preparation. Exactly. Or, or preparing their sets with, without a DJ controller plugged into their software. It's a preparation mode, and then the difference here is that you throw it all onto a USB, plug it into the unit, and what I'm getting at here is that the, the screen behaves as if you were using normal, in inverted commas, DJ software. 
all the waveforms, a big library that's easier to search and sort than on a normal basic CD player, for instance. So a lot of the benefits of digital are right there on that big screen without actually needing a laptop anywhere near the unit. Exactly, and that's really the beauty of it. You know, you show up with this unit, which is relatively light, um, and a USB stick, and that's all you need to bring. So who's going to like this? I'm thinking we're, talk we're talking um, we're talking mobile DJs. I notice there's a couple of microphone channels on there, which is going to appeal to, to mobile DJs. Um, who else? I'm thinking maybe club DJs who don't want a club DJ set up at home. They want something... Exactly. There are, there are a lot of situations where uh, club DJs want something more basic at home, something more affordable at home, something more portable, you know, and then this is also something, you know, you can set up. If you're, if you're a club DJ, you're already using Rekordbox, um, then with, you know, you can take this to, let's say you do like a smaller party, a smaller type of event where you don't bring, need to bring your DJ M900, CDJ2000, you know. So here you have a much, much simpler setup, you know. Awesome. Let's have a very quick feature tour of it then for people who are dying to see what the actual controls we have on here are. So maybe we can start with the deck here. So I see we've got four hot cues. Um, and these are quite similar to a lot of DJ controllers in that you can alter uh, what the buttons do, loop slicing, auto beat loop, and so on. Exactly. So these buttons right here have four different uh, functionalities. So there's there's your hot cues. You can you simply record by pressing down on them, and then you press it again to play it back. Um, then you also have uh, an auto beat loop function, and then uh, a new feature that's uh, that's a loop slicer. You know, so if you're using the loop slicer, it shows you right here the length of your slice. So it's one, two, four, or eight beats. That's the loop slicer. And um, then up here is your platter. This is of course a little smaller than a platter you would find on a CDJ or on, on the XDJ 1000. This is roughly the size of what you find on like a DDJ SX. Um, then up here is your loop function. And I can see the loop is displaying very clearly on the waveform there. There's your loop. And let me ask you a question about things like recorded cues and so on. Uh, if you alter your cues on music on a USB stick and you kind of add some cues to your music while you're playing, mm -hmm. is that something that can be put back into record box afterwards? So in other words, if I make a cue point in software within a performance, can that be kind of re-imported back into the software? This is my ignorance of record box here. Right, yeah, you can do that. So you have the ability to create your cue points in the software, while you're but also on the hardware and then, and so then it, to sync it, so it, it's sync a two it back. Way, okay, that's yeah. cool. So it's a two-way thing there. And apart from what you just described, this is really very much like a standard CDJ. You know, everything's very familiar to people there. Uh, and if we're moving across to the mixer, as we spoke about earlier, it's all very familiar, apart from, of course, the big area at the top, which has got its own buttons and so on. So maybe you can talk us about, about around the buttons around that big screen at the top there and what they do. Well, to start out, you want to load your track in. So you go to Browse, here's your back button, and now you can browse by the artist's name, the album, the track. You know, you can create playlists and look in there. Uh, you can even go into your history and see what, you, what songs you played last night. Um, you can do a search. And um, now you have, um, you know, the letters of the alphabet right here, and you can use that to type in, you know, whatever you're looking for. And that's a reason to be simple, because that's always one of the complaints about not having a keyboard in front of you, that it's harder to do that kind of thing. But that looks reasonably simple to use. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the string you're going to type in is going to be, what, three or four letters, Yeah, right? yeah. So, the, you know, with this setup, I think it works It's fine. easier than the remote control on my satellite box, so I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, you can also search by BPM, by key, you know, so let's say you go into BPM, you know, you, now it brings up all songs that are within plus minus 4% of 122 BPM. Okay. You know, so if that's sort of the BPM range you want to be in, you can bring it up that way. And I've noticed there's key information imported from Rekordbox as well, so you can, you can, you know, use it for finding stuff that matches in key. Exactly. So Rekordbox uh, actually does a great job at, uh, at al analyzing the keys of the tracks. Um, so if you are into harmonic mixing, um, you can you can look it up by key. You know. So once you have the track loaded in, so let's just go to track, select another day. I'll press the load button here. I've just loaded it in over there. Okay. So and, this is. Uh, so now you see the waveform here, and then a more detailed waveform up there. If I'm scratching, you get the visual feedback right there. Let's have a little feel of that. So that feels okay. The screen's not kind of mega smooth like a, you know, like an iPhone 6 or something, but it's certainly good enough. 
it's certainly responsive. I guess that's the most important thing. Um, it shows you your BPM right there, and then as you're pitching up, so right now we're in, in plus minus 10% uh, tempo range mode, you know, it tells you right there what the percentage is, what the BPM is. And I've noticed that it's got the standard sync function on both decks, which is uh, you know, something that DJs have tended to, you know, uh, require nowadays. Um, so, so this again is something that was first introduced on some of the higher end Pioneer stuff and is now bubbled down to these kinds of units. What else have we got on, in the buttons around the, around the screen there that might be unfamiliar to people? Um, you have a tag list button. So if you see a track, let's say you're on your browsing library and you see a track that you want to play later but you're not quite ready to uh, play it yet, you can tag it. So, oh, so that's it's a bit like a prepare window or a prepare exactly. list. Exactly. So the tag list is a temporary playlist. It actually disappears as soon as you power the, power the unit down. So you can, uh, okay, if you're okay. at home, and you can create a playlist for your gig tonight. But if you want to do a temporary playlist as you're browsing at the gig, that's what the tag list is for. If you press on info, it shows you more info on the track right there. Such okay, as okay. Artwork. You know, we have like a, a five-star rating system uh, and so forth. And uh, and then here's your menu button. So now you can use that uh, to, uh, let's say you want to sort by BPM. You know, so now 82 BPM is my slowest track, 140 is my fastest okay, track. Okay, okay, so this you know, is just so uh, li library management kind of stuff. So on the left-hand side there, you've got two USBs, which obviously makes sense. Uh, what's the MIDI and record box buttons for there on the left? These two here. Well, you can also use this as a MIDI controller. So next month we're going to release a TSI file for Tractor. Okay. You know, so you have a, a USB Type B port in the rear, and uh, you can use. So with that, you can hook it up to your laptop and use this as a controller. You know, and then if you press the record box button, you have an Ethernet port in the rear, so you can actually connect your laptop directly to this unit and DJ off of that. So if you, if let's say you say this is not big enough of a screen for me, <clears throat> I much rather have a 15-inch you know, computer with me, 15 inch screen, you can do that and then you would press the record box button. So that now, just to clarify, record box again is music management software, so if you set it up that way, the track would not play from the computer, you know, so it's basically an external hard drive with a screen. Think okay, of it that okay. way. Okay, so it's gonna load it's gonna load the track into itself in all before it plays it. It's exactly. gonna load it in. So it would load it into this unit and play So if back the unit was playing and the computer crashed would the unit carry on playing? Yes, have have you would. tried it? Yes. <laughs> okay, indeed. cool. Yeah. Well, apart from a quick look around the back, because everyone likes to see the, the plugs and sockets on the back of something, I think we've pretty much done that one. Let's get in and have a, a close scan down the back if we can. Clearly we can't because uh, I didn't practice this bit. Oh, we can, good. So we have the, uh, this is the main XLR outs here. We've got RCA master outs. Uh, we've got TRS booth outs. And then here's our inputs. We've got channel uh, one and channel two there for line and phono with a switch. Uh, and then a couple of microphones at the back there. And there's that uh, ethernet link that you told us about for, um, for linking up external gear. Awesome. Well, I think we've done everything we needed to do there. Thank you ever so much, Lars, for that. Um, it's been Phil here at the NAM show for Digital DJ Tips with Lars with the new XDJ RX from Pioneer. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Phil.